conference website for the full programming schedule and periodic updates on our social media channels and uh, daily email briefs. Networking session Zoom links and the dance party information will be located in the Crowdcast session descriptions on the conference website and in the daily email briefs. Um, attendees should set up their profiles on uh, Crowdcast and utilize the chat and question features. Um, you can also email conference at ssdp.org with any tech issues that might arise and somebody will get back to you quickly. Uh, join the conference conversation in the Sensible 2021 channel in Slack. And um, you all should have received the uh, Crowdcast event link and password in your emails. Um, pass it back to Rachel. We want to thank you for all of your hard work in the last year. And for those of you who had to step away and are now back. Welcome back. We're glad you he you're here. A big thank you to our speakers who took the time to participate in our sessions and provide their expertise, knowledge and perspectives and share their lived experiences. We greatly appreciate your service to our members and conference attendees. I'd also like to thank our conference sponsors and advocacy partners and everyone who co contributed to the scholarship funds to make holding this conference possible and to help us make this as accessible and affordable for our members and attendees. Being able to provide a platform to not only connect virtually, but provide cutting edge content education and training to our youth members in a challenging and frightening time is invaluable and really amazing. Despite all that happened this past year, SSDP are still accomplished an incredible amount. We invite you to join us for our award ceremony on Sunday to hear more uh, to hear about just a portion of all of the amazing things our network has been up to and join us in the celebration of SSD peers. We are very excited about the future of SSDP. We are excited to bring on Jason Ortiz as SSDP's executive director. We look forward to continue working with Jason to support all of you and your amazing work. We hope you enjoy the conference and now I'll pass the mic over to Jason. Um, we'll introduce Carol Ortega, our keynote speaker. Right on. Thank you, Luis. Hello, SSDP. My name is Jason Ortiz. I am the new executive director of Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Uh, and it is with great honor and personal joy that I get to introduce our keynote speaker to kick off Sensible 2021, Carol Ortega, founder of Musica Capital and Cana Ciencia, the premier cannabis science event in Colombia. Carol has been working to end the war on drugs in her home country of Colombia for many years. And for decades, the U.S. funded Plan Colombia exported our failed war on drugs to Colombia and all of Latin America, resulting in violence against local farmers of coca and cannabis, including the aerial fumigation, or in other words, dropping poisonous pesticides from the sky onto the natural environments and indigenous communities of Colombia. This policy created intense resentment from indigenous revolutionaries, and Carol worked to bring peace between the Colombian government and the FARC Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, and the issue of equity for local farmers was a vital piece of the peace negotiations. This was well before the concept of cannabis equity had become mainstream in the United States. In addition to her peace work, Carol also created Cana Ciencia, Colombia's first science-focused cannabis conference. I was personally fortunate to be able to speak at this event in 2019, broadening my own understanding of Latin American policy. And Carol's commitment to science-driven public policy has helped usher in a new era in cannabis policy for Colombia. Carol's work is an example of how sensible drug policy based in harm reduction and restorative justice can bring peace to the communities ravaged by the war on drugs. This puts drug policy activists and experts, us, as the catalyst of peace across the globe. We as SSDP can be that catalyst for peace in all of our communities as we transition into a post-war on drugs world. And so for that, I want to say thank you to Carol for all that you do to bring pride and inclusion to the global Latinx community. And it's with great honor that I introduce you all to Carol Ortega of Musica Capital. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to join SSDP event today regarding policy, regarding how uh, uh, you guys are changing the world. Congratulations, because every single day that you go and volunteer and go and work for SSDP, you are bringing peace to the world and you actually brought peace to my country. So really, really thank you. 
please continue to do what you're doing, guys. Really good job. Thank you. Um, I was trying, as you can see, I have one of the conflict flowers or conflict plants in my back. I was trying to, to, to find some coca leaves, but I couldn't. Uh, so it's still um, some probably some of you don't even uh, recognize a coca leaf, but probably some of you have have um, tried cocaine, right? And, and that's fine. Uh, I think I think that we're free free to choose the substance that we want to put in our bodies. Um, we are uh, free to choose uh, the life that we want to live, and we are free to choose. Uh, the right options, uh, even if it looks like it's immoral or illegal. And I'm going to touch bases on those two uh, major factors that have driven so many policies around the world, especially after Nixon's and all the craziness and prohibitions regarding these beautiful plants, because they are plants. They um, are natural, they are not they, at, the, at the beginning you know, pre-cocaine pre processes, the coca leaf is a plant. It's a beautiful plant, just like cannabis. But somehow we created a war around, around these amazing plants that can actually bring food, uh, textile, uh, and, and so, many, so many benefits to the world. So I'm going to, I have a presentation for you today. Uh, I'm going to share the presentation, um, sharing some other insights outside myself, um, beyond what, what Jason, uh, thank you Jason so much for introducing uh, this presentation and myself. My name is Carol Batea, I'm from Bogota, Colombia, and I grew up in Bogota in the 80s and 90s, and then I had the beautiful opportunity to join the U.S. Um, um, and I have been living in the U.S. for the last 15 years of my life, and I consider U.S. my country. I love U.S. U.S. is my home. And I also love Colombia, of course. All my memories, and all my childhood, and all my adolescence years, um, uh, I had the beautiful opportunity to pass those years in Colombia, and I had also the opportunity to live through, through war, a civil war of 50 years, uh, that unfortunately we had to face in our country. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I decided to meet, to um, migrate to U.S. to have a best opportunity of life, peace, assist, and, you know, uh, better economical and living opportunities. So, um, in 2000, Um, okay, I need a permit to share my screen, please. Okay, while, while I can share my screen, uh, I was telling you guys that I was born in Bogota, Colombia, and I had the opportunity to live through the 80s and 90s in my country. As you guys might know, um, uh, all, um, you know, the 80s and 90s, were a very difficult times and a very difficult years to live in Colombia under under um, narco traffic and under the Paulo Escobar era. Okay, so now I can share my screen. Thank you very much. Please let me know if you guys can visualize my screen. guys um, see my screen right now? right now? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Well, um, as I was sharing with you, um, I'm from Bogota, Colombia, and, and in 2013, I decided to join the cannabis industry after all the legalization movement around the world. I uh, recognized the economical opportunity that the, the whole world was facing at the moment, um, with the legalization of cannabis. Also, I was uh, treating my PTSD with regular uh, pharmaceutical um, chemicals and drugs 
um, just as Prozac for depression, uh, Valium for insomnia, etc. And I discovered in Oregon the benefits of cannabis for PTSD treatment. And the PTSD came from the war on drugs in Colombia. Uh, so I found in cannabis peace, relief after many, many um, uh, pharmaceutical solutions that I found in the market. Um, definitely, I decided to move uh, towards um, cannabis, an uh, organic and natural oil. And I'm not changing cannabis. I'm not, sto I'm not stopping uh, using cannabis, I think, for the rest of my life because it really changed my life. I couldn't sleep at night because uh, one of the symptoms and one of the um, worst um, effects of, of PTSD are nightmares and and insomnia. So that was one of the major uh, inconvenience that I have for the PTSD that I got, unfortunately. And cannabis have been doing great for me. I sleep like a baby without any nightmare. And I decided to share that to the world, especially to my country, because every person in Colombia that was born in the 80s or had the opportunity to live in Colombia in the 80s and 90s and I have PTSD. Um, so, so, so I thought, wow, uh, wow, the plants that that created a war in our country can be the best solution for treating our PTSD after, unfortunately, living in 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 the war during during Colombia those years. Um, so I decided to join the industry because of those two reasons to help. Uh, the country and my community, not only Colombia, but the Latino community that you guys know that we are the community most affected by the war on drugs, even more than the black community in US, US and more than the um, Middle Eastern community, if you will, um, in, in US and, and in the world. Uh, I remember that uh, when I was growing up in Colombia, uh, every, every weekend in Bogota during the 90s mostly, we had bombs, uh, and and every Monday we always ask ourselves in in our high school, um, who is going to be missing today? Who uh, unfortunately have died from a bomb or some um, terrorism act in Bogota? So um, definitely coming coming from that from that background and have the opportunity to live that, uh, I decided to live my life in order to do something, to put that sand of rain, um, a grain of sand, sorry, uh, to end the conflict and to end the situation that I had to face and live through in, uh, in my country. So in Portland, Oregon, I had the beautiful opportunity to live in Portland, Oregon, beautiful uh, white supremacist um, state, uh, still beautiful, beautiful, great, uh, great times. Um, so I decided to found um, in Portland, Oregon, a consultancy firm uh, where I can put all my experience and knowledge in order to help the legalization of cannabis worldwide because I understood from the very beginning that due to the legalization of cannabis, Colombia was finally in peace. And I, I'm going to um, describe in detail um, that that issue after. So um, I put together a high level consultancy Latinos in venture capital and regulations around the world. And up to date, we have been advised more than 50 companies in the Americas regarding um, a, opportunities in cannabis. We specialize ourselves in fundraising. And also, uh, we advise governments in how a structure. Um, uh, uh, um, profitable industry in their countries. Uh, we have the opportunity to work in Colombia, Ecuador, Aruba. I had the opportunity to work in Oregon and, 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 and the city of Los Angeles, uh, advising and structure, structuring some licensing processes, regulation, talking about social equity and the opportunities for our community uh, in terms of poverty mitigation and um, also uh, social change and, and well, in the case of Colombia, peace process agreement. So our consultancy 
firm focused on the government and government regulation policies and investors. We also help uh, and advise investors that want to join the industry in terms of portfolio structure and investment placement. And for entrepreneurs, we fundraise this capital for them. Um, why I decided to choose these specific activities in cannabis? Well, I'm a CPA and MBA, so all my experience as a professional have been in accounting, finance, and venture capital and banking investing. So I decided to put those uh, years of experience and knowledge um, at the service of this beautiful cause and, uh, and at the service of this beautiful um, industry in the Americas. Also, uh, we recognize that one of the biggest limitations that Latin America is facing regarding cannabis and coca and, and well, and right now the opportunity of, of legalization of cannabis and navigating an industry, we recognize that one of the uh, biggest limitations was the stigma, uh, the ignorance, the fear, as you can imagine, um, well, Colombians are and Latin Americans are quite afraid to join the industry after all the years of of of, of war and and you know and um, prohibition. Um, so we decided to create Latino Science Forum before we were with Canaciencia and now under the pandemic and in order to join and uh, be, uh, and. Um, the internet and and and, and uh, being able to 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 navigate the internet, we decided to put it uh, Latino Science Forum, and also because we want to uh, bring other aspects of Latin American science, like uh, the research that is con is being conducted right now in Colombia regarding garlic, for example, and other science that we are creating in Latin America, but sometimes. Our scientists in Latin America don't have the spaces to share their research findings um, in in Spanish or English. So we decided to create Latino Science Forum for two reasons. First, to empower our scientists in Latin America. We are doing science in Latin America to ch to to share with the world what Latin American scientists are doing. Uh, well, we have, uh, we just started with cannabis since it's been a big movement in Latin America and a lot of research, a lot of scientific research now is being conducted towards uh, benefits of cannabis for humans and, 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 and animals. Uh, so we decided to put together the first symposium in Spanish uh, related to cannabis science. Uh, proudly, we put it together uh, our first on site event in Colombia. Um, our second uh, site event in Colombia gathers about 1,500 people. It was huge for a topic like that in Latin America. And, and we really believe that, that we can fight uh, the um, limitation regarding education and stigma in Latin America through science. The only way to fight the stigma related to cannabis is through science. Uh, so um, we visit a lot of universities, inviting them um, to join uh, our event. Before joining the cannabis industry in Colombia, I was a professor of accounting and finance of an Ivy League here in Colombia. I remember that I was invited to the faculty there, and they and then they and they were amazed. They were they were uh, they couldn't believe that a professor of finance was joining the industry and talking about cannabis. So I became um, the pothead professor, and they called me the pothead professor, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that a PhD uh, faculty of scientists in Colombia. Um, thought that I that I had just become a drug addict uh, because I saw an opportunity for 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 entrepreneurship now uh, and 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 a, and a big macroeconomic opportunity so that can, that guy can give you guys a big understanding on how Colombia was back in 2016 and how through science we have been able to change that perception and stigma. Um, and so I remember that at that at that at that meeting with all these PhDs and academics, uh, I couldn't believe that they didn't know about the endocannabinoid system, uh, being one of the biggest scientific discoveries, uh, discover uh, discovering in 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 the late contemporaneous uh, um, science. 
and and um, well, I, I introduced medicinal cannabis to this I believe uh, university. And after four years, they finally opened a line in order to research medicinal cannabis in Colombia, specific universities. Uh, university so that can give you a big idea of of how was cannabis seen. Um, in Colombia, and I'm pretty sure all over Latin America and in the world, really, um, before, before they understand the science behind uh, cannabis and all this uh, revolution that is that has been um, um, coming from from the knowledge that we get every day regarding the cannabis plant. Another another uh, major limitation that that we saw. Uh, was the was the the, uh, the lack of funds for Latin American entrepreneurs, and this is not only for Canada, but in general, one of the biggest obstacles and limitations that have an entrepreneur, a Latino or Latin entrepreneur, in anything is finding uh, capital investments and funds to to go to the next step in their in their initiative in their business. So we also decided to put together Latin Investment Summit, where we gather family office, office, private equity funds, and in general, accredited accredit individual investors and institutions as well, in order to help uh, uh, Latino uh, leaders and Latino um, business owners to find capital and move to the next level. We don't want our entrepreneurs to face difficulties because they don't have the money to keep growing. Um, so we have we facing in terms of education in these both ways. Um, it's been very challenging for the stigma of cannabis and the fear. As you can imagine, the stigma in US is different than in Colombia. In Colombia, we saw people dying, we saw bombs, we saw a lot of violence and blood. Um, and and so the stigma is is and the fear is is of course harder to to mitigate. But we are we are doing uh, that through science, and 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 I think that science is going to win. The truth is going to win, and facts win always. And well, Latin Investment Summit, we this uh, it's been challenging because venture capital um, is not well known in Latin America. Uh, so so you guys can have an idea. Uh, business plans, a pitch, a pitch deck, investment summaries, all this terminology and all this knowledge is not very well known uh, within Latin American community. And this is one of the biggest, in my opinion, one of the biggest limitations for wealth uh, spread and wealth uh, equity, if you will, and also mitigation of poverty is that we just don't know how to access capital because we have been employees and unfortunately there's very few entrepreneurs and leaders in, in Latin America in general in comparison with other with other uh, communities and countries. So, so in 2017, since uh, uh, we at, at our, our consulting firm, we, we have a, a strong background in academics and most of us were professors at some point, we decided to create a research. Um, and, and we wanted to demonstrate that the cannabis uh, legalization is a revolution. And how can we demonstrate that? Well, we conducted a documental research, a scientific documental research in 2017, and we established that, that uh, in order to call um, the cannabis industry revolution, we needed to demonstrate that this industry, that the legalization will bring a dust, dust, drastic change in the economic, social, and moral sphere of a society. Uh, our goal was established if the evolution and projection of the emerging legal medicine and cannabis industry in Latin America can be considered as a revolution. So we uh, investigated, we researched three major factors, the economic, social, and moral change that we were facing towards the cannabis legalization in Latin America. Um, so the social change um, for, for um, we found out that the cannabis legalization brought to Colombia, in this case, and Latin America is bringing um, significant social positive effects. Our communities are in peace. Um, we are going to talk about the peace process agreement in Colombia and how the legalization of 
cannabis was key, was the major factor that made possible peace in Colombia. And this is huge. What is not huge about making peace in the world? Why nobody's talking about that? This is something that I always ask myself, like how, why everybody's talking about the great benefits and financial, economics, um, taxes, um, I mean, you name it. There's, there's so many news, but I haven't seen people pointing out that Colombia is in peace because we legalize cannabis, because uh, students like yours, volunteers and people that are working on SSDP and all the effort that you have done, it worked. Thank you. Our communities are facing peace because we have legalized drugs. We, um, well, uh, flower um, by flower, I mean plant by plant, uh, we still have issues with coca, but hopefully we will end the war on drugs. I really hope to, to see um, the war on drugs finalized before I die. I, I think it's possible. I think it's, it's, not, it's not a dream anymore. Uh, we have discovered also that, that um, cannabis, um, uh, legalization, well, it's a huge macroeconomic event that, that is definitely the opportunity to mitigate poverty and, and give our communities uh, prosperity. Um, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to redignify really our communities. Um, just to give you an example, just, just holding a passport, uh, a Colombian passport, was 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 shameful in the 80s and 90s. We we, we had to uh, uh, every time that we were in an, in an airport, we needed to to be in a, in another line. Uh, so so. Uh, being a Colombian in in 80s and 90s and travel around the world was was very difficult. We needed, you know, at, at the airports people just research our 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 bags and and, and it was not nice really. We we faced that that type of 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 discrimination and and still, you know, I mean Colombia is well known for coffee, cocaine, um, and and cannabis. Uh, uh, so, so this is an opportunity to really reunify the work communities, uh, and it's a beautiful opportunity. And well, social equity, social equity in cannabis. I think, I think that this is a huge issue, uh, and I think that we are still understanding what really social equity is. I think that we haven't created a definition, issue, and little by little we're understanding uh, what it really means to to to. It to generate some input regarding social equity in the cannabis industry. Well, uh, the social change, I will I cover that. The moral issue, this is this is a real issue, uh, especially if we talk about the moral issue in the United States. It is funny. At this point, I, I, I saw it funny. Um, for We are immoral for, for U.S. Um, standards, policies, and immigration regulation. So if you are a green card holder, I mean, you are an immigrant, but you're a legal immigrant. I'm talking about legal immigrants here. If you are a legal immigrant, you cannot join the industry. So what is the meaning of social equity? What is the meaning of social equity? If I'm a, a, an immigrant running away from the war on drugs, I had the beautiful opportunity to be in U.S. because I'm very lucky. I had the opportunity to educate myself in U.S. I'm working towards the progress of U.S. I'm paying my taxes, but I cannot join the cannabis industry because it's immoral under federal uh, law. Uh, since it is it is still illegal at the federal level, any activity uh, is seen as an immoral activity. So, for example. I, I I haven't had the change of 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 do my my process for my citizenship. Um, so I'm still a resident alien. Fifty years of resident aliency. I don't care. It's fine. Um, of course, I want to be a citizen. I want to be a real gringita, 
right? I don't want to be uh, getting up a second hand, getting up, of course I am, but I would love the opportunity to be an American. I have worked very hard half of my life for the United States of American progress, and I think I deserve a chance. And really, what is essence moral about a war? What is moral about glyphosate propagation? What is moral about causing PTSD to a whole generation, people? Really? Seriously? United States government? Come on. Am I immoral? Mm, I don't know. You guys are immoral? immoral? Well, you're still uh, fumigating my people with glyphosate. Yes, you guys are immoral. I think that's wrong. Uh, so, um, I think that I that I uh, had addressed the economic issue. Uh, however, let's let's remember that there's five big uh, macroeconomic events so far in in um, the human history. The first was the gold rush. The second, the oil boom. The third, prohibition ends when when they grew, uh, get legalized in the theories. Um, the fourth, the dot com era, and the fifth is the is definitely the the cannabis legalization. So, talking about the moral issue, talking about the moral issue, and talking about still the social issue, when uh, when 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 thinking about um, you know the thing with how immoral is a world and how immoral is a Latino worker uh, having or thinking about an opportunity to work in the cannabis industry. Let's think about morality, United States. Let's think about uh, what is right and what is wrong. And let's think about social equity. When every time I, I hear social equity, I think that we really need to review the immigration policies regarding the cannabis industry. The social equity should start from that. But let's start from something beautiful, for something that finally we had the opportunity to reach in Colombia after 50 years of war. Five zero. I want to make sure that you guys understood my English. Uh, I know it's not perfect. So 50 years of war. I was born in war, and I thought that I was going to die in a war, in a civil war. In 1981, Julio Cesar Turbay versus Fusk. First, first um, uh, uh, time that we tried to, 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 to make peace in Colombia, failed. 1982, 84, 88, 90, 91, 93, 98, 99, 2002, 2012, failed. 12 process agreements already failed. Years of trying to reach peace in Colombia failed. What happened? Well, cannabis won in 2015 and 2016. Yes is because we legalized cannabis that we finally found peace and it's been a long lasting peace thank goodness we are all happy uh we have been in peace since 2016. thank you colorado really really it was because colorado legalized recreational cannabis in 2012 that we finally put these guys together in agreement so uh, let's talk about the modern issue again. <laughs> I really want to apply for my citizenship people. So we need to vote. We need to end this craziness, really. So cannabis won in 2015, in 2016. Why finally this peace process agreement uh, happened and is happening and finally we're living in peace here in Colombia. Uh, once again, because we uh, because Colorado legalized cannabis at the recreational level. Then Uruguay joined uh, as the first country at the federal level as a country to legalize cannabis, what um, helped even heavily um, or, or, or 
um, help us more to keep that process agreement in place. So it's been four years of beautiful peace in cannabis in Colombia. Thank you, SSDP. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you for um, all all the uh, the activities regarding uh, ending the war on drugs because you guys are making it happening. And, and we still need your help. This is not being ended. Uh, we are still in war. Uh, not, with, not, not as bad, bad as civil war, but we're still facing a lot of problems with the coca leaf. So we still need to, to keep your help. We still need your efforts your, your, and, and your work. So thank you, students, for saving civil drug policy. We're making it happen. Little by little, plant by plant. Um, I want to give you a fast um, um, overview of, um, you know, what's happening in America Latina regarding legalization of, of cannabis, marijuana, uh, and coca. So in Argentina, it's legal since 2017, only for medicinal purpose. Uh, Self-cultivation is allowed, limit and access uh, pretty much only by importing, you will have access. In Brazil, it's still illegal, only CBD are allowed to be imported. And however, uh, the cells have been growing dramatically in Brazil. In Chile, it's medicinal at the, uh, uh, legal. Uh, cultivation is very restricted. Is very restricted, and self cultivation uh, are are um, happening uh, through collectives. In Paraguay, it's legal since 2017. However, the regulation came in 2018. In Mexico, we're hoping to see this year legalization at the medicinal and recreational level. So far, CBD have been imported to the country. Peru legal since 2000. Uh, 17, however, no regulation is in place. Uh, you can import CBD. In Ecuador, it's legal at the medicinal level. Regulation is in place in order to get license, etc. Something good that they have done is the, the differentiation between hemp as an agroindustrial good instead of a pharmaceutical only. Uh, Uruguay is um, cannabis is legal since 2013, all forms. 20 licenses to grow hemp, 4 licenses to grow high THC, 16 licenses uh, regarding scientific research. Um, the Caribbean, Aruba has legalized lately and regulated the industry, it's foreign friendly. Uh, medicinal cannabis is legal in Antigua, Barbuda, Jamaica, St. Vincent, and Grenadine. And you need to be a resident if you want to um, become an entrepreneur here. In Colombia, well, Colombia has one of the uh, industry more mature in Latin America. We have uh, legalized cannabis. Cannabis was legal for research purposes since 1986. However, the regulation came in 2015. Uh, part of that regulation was uh, a big debate within the process agreement as well. So far, we have a, a beautiful uh, 3,800 a uh, license for a small cultivars, pretty much most of the FARC cultivars are under a small cultivar license. Um, national interest in industry, so there's major um, interest in the government to, to make uh, the industry successful. Um, and still this, this year, we hope that the country legalize the commercialization for internal and market exports regarding dried flour. Uh, I want to invite you to our next conference, it's July the, uh, 23rd, uh, our scientific symposium, and our uh, investment summit will be in July 28th. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody at SSDP. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Carol. We do have lots of questions for you, but I think we're going to start with the one from Marlo, who is one of our board members from El Paso, Texas. And you would like to hear a little bit more what it was like actually speaking with the FARC directly. I'm sure they didn't trust the government to just do the right thing in order to get the peace process together. So what was it like communicating with folks that were working in the illicit market? Yeah, definitely. Um, very interesting. 
uh, you can you can see that the FARC leaders were uh, very well educated individuals. However, they they did uh, very um, um, they were delinquents, uh, and most of them, most of, of of the FARC was taking advantage of of the growers. Um, they were the ones managing the logistics and the commercialization of cannabis. Uh, as you guys might know, Toribio, El Valle del Cauca in Colombia, um, there's about 4,000 hectares already um, cultivated in cannabis, and that's the, ma they, the, the black market that is still um, fill, fill out all the demand in South America. So it's a billion dollar industry. And, and when money comes along, people just sometimes um, lose their direction. And unfortunately, some of these leaders uh, um, lose that direction, and they became the narco traffickers. Um, and and and, and um, yeah, it was very interesting. However, the point of view, and and there's some positive effects, if you will, and and pretty much regarding our genetics and conservation, uh, because because they uh, keep. Um, away the police for so many years and in any type of, of army forces our genetics were preserved and and these camps in Colombia were preserved as well if you will but under a huge social cost I mean um, I, I don't think that it, neither of, of the parties of our board um, had uh, it, they, they were right I don't think that you uh, solution any issue in life with guns and with violence. I think there's always better ways to communicate and, and confront conflicts and get to solutions and answers and keep moving forward. But so um, it was very interesting. It was very interesting. I think that the most beautiful part is what is happening now. Uh, I gotta say that um, uh, the post-conflict scenario in Colombia have been of such a, an incredible experience. Uh, for example, there's the committee, uh, the, uh, the committee of truth, um, which has a tremendous, tremendous um, task and duty, and is 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 um, bringing the truth to the victims. One of uh, when when you finish a conflict, when you finish a war. Um, in one of the of of the biggest part of, of offering relief to the victim is the truth, and and this is what every victim always asks um, in in all the meetings. We need the truth. We need to know the truth. What far did what they did? Uh, what about the kidnaps, the the killing people, the torturing people, um, the bombs, and 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 this is uh, what. Uh, uh, what I always, I always have encountered in every single meeting is we want the truth um, as as victims, and we were working towards that. And and the students at all levels, a representative students from um, almost all universities in Colombia, uh, not only in Bogota but um, most areas in Colombia, um, have a delegate to that committee. It's a big committee where even the church is part of it. And and is the we we want to find the truth. We want to we want to explain why people lose their families, why all these massacres and all these uh, horrendous acts happening. And and this is what we're facing uh, after 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 the peace process agreement is the is the search for for that truth for that truth because uh, it's been you know um, well known that the truth is the way that you. Uh, really can uh, get back with the victims and offer some some psychological relief. Thank you. So we have a question from Robert, who is one of our staff members here, and asking if you could comment a bit on the aerial fumigation. And we're actually talking about that in as far as our appropriations work with our policy committee. to see if we can actually remove the funding on a federal level. So a bit if you talk a little bit about that. And then also at the same time, I'll say, how can students either in the U.S. or anywhere 
kind of join hands together to figure out, we can collect all of our stories, and what role do you think students play in that global sharing of information? Mm -hmm. But first, specifically, when it comes to the aerial fumigation, is that something um, that you feel is a priority or could be a priority, and has it affected your work in any way? Yeah, I, I think I think that it's a major issue. It was a major issue um, during the peace process agreement. Um, the fumigation have brought to Colombia horrendous uh, effects in in our land. Um, many many hectares totally destroyed and sterilized because fumigation with glyphosate specifically in our communities. Uh, the, the the last three generations of, of of communities in Colombia have been horrendously affected by the fumigation. You can see if you if you go to the Valle del Cauca, Caquetá, uh, other major areas where fumigation is every, every day, every day you can see um, activities regarding fumigation happening. Well, you will find um, terrible effects on human beings in that era, 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 area. And, and it's very sad, it's very sad to see um, all these, all these um, effects on kids. Um, so, many, so many cancer, cancer types, so many deformations, um, and, and you name it, there's, there's, there's a huge list. Um, uh, the psychological effects, uh, PTSD. Um, I mean, I, I can I can have another another <laughs> hour just just going through all the bad effects. So yes, we need to stop this. We need to stop this. Let's remember that we we need to think about uh, our planet as a as a whole. Uh, whatever am I uh, I do uh, to damage a part of our planet, I'm damaging the whole the whole planet. In Colombia, we have tremendous. Uh, Colombia and Brazil, um, we are very um, very lucky to have a lot a lot of of of, of uh, diversification in terms of, of natural resources and in 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 animals. We are one of the more diverse countries in the world. We have part of our jungle under under uh, our territory to keep this jungle alive is crucial for our existence in this planet. So so it's an issue that should worry every single human being really. really. Not only for the for, for, for what we're doing to another human being but in in terms of, of conservating our planet is it's very bad. Glyphosate should be erased from the globe, no doubt. And what role do you think students can play globally, right? So we're talking about it's one big planet, right? And so specifically, we're having a conversation about cannabis legalization everywhere, right? What role do you think the youth are playing in Colombia, but also in the rest of the world? Well, it, it, the role is, is the future of the planet, you know? You guys have the future of, of our planet in your hands. I mean, if, if the youth doesn't, doesn't take action, we're all dead. And this is the opportunity for you to really change this reality, to really change this terrible experience that, for example, I had to, I, I, I had to live. Um, keep doing what you guys are doing at, at, at SDP. This is one huge, tremendous opportunity to change this reality, to help the whole planet. Because think about how your actions in the U.S. Uh, regarding moving forward with legalization of cannabis, your vote, your vote. I think that there's nothing more powerful than your vote. Your your purchase power. There's nothing more powerful than your purchase power. You know, um, make a research of whatever good or service you're, you're, you're getting and support support social responsible organizations. Uh, in terms of humanity and with the planet, I think those are two actions that we can do on a daily basis, and 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 um, keep keep moving forward with cannabis legalization. I think that the facts speaks themselves. It's not it's not you know it's not Carol or Jason or no. It's just facts. 
we have seen the legalization of cannabis first of all is bringing peace and there's a still war because of cannabis in the world let's take a look to asia afghanistan the work there is not done it's only started let's take a look to mexico mexico is facing major uh, issues regarding cannabis legalization and probably um, uh, 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 through cannabis legalization sinaloa and all these very violent regions are going to find peace i'm pretty sure because we did it in colombia and it's working uh, it has you know it, it has its challenges but it's working so i think that through both through your your purchase power um volunteering to organization that is changing the world uh, SSDP and your, and, but really your vote, your vote, your vote, um, vote, take action, speak up, um, you know, I mean, the U.S. needs to change. You, in my opinion, U.S. is the best country to be in the world as a Latina. Imagine that. <laughs> and still, still, but still is the best. And, and, and we can make it better. We can improve what we are doing in U.S. And whatever you guys are doing in U.S. is going to permeate, is going to impact, big impact, huge impact in the world. In so, the world. I, if I, people I, we're gonna, we're all gonna, over the world just follow U.S. Whatever you guys do, we follow. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to spend a lot of time talking about cannabis equity over the weekend and over the next few years. So we definitely want to make sure your voice is seen by Congress and all the other folks. And so we only have about five minutes left. So I'm going to put two different questions uh, and then we can wrap up. So the first one is, as we start to legalize cannabis, how can we structure our policies here in the States to make it easier for Colombia to legalize and enter the broader market? Uh, and then also, this one's really important to, so I think, SSDP. How has the conversation around cannabis legalization been different from the conversation around coca legalization? Right. Or there's very different backgrounds prior. Um, so quickly on the cannabis equity front, but really I want to hear about the difference between those two beautiful plants. Sure. Uh, so uh, I think I think that the federal level legalization, uh, uh, we really need, need to move forward that direction. Uh, once uh, cannabis is legal at the federal level in the U.S., the whole world is going to change. Um, I'm not, not even extrapolating this. Uh, once uh, cannabis is legal at the medicinal level, at least, at the federal uh, level in the U.S., we are going to see social equity. And I'm going to explain how. First, the immigration policy. Why is it moral? that Carol Ortega is working in the cannabis industry. This is just an example of so many. Imagine how many growers, Latin American growers, Latino immigrants, green holders, uh, immigrants that work cultivating cannabis in the U.S. How many? I think that's quite a lot. How many trimmers? How many people that work in as a bad tender? We have the right to join the industry. We do. We were the most affected. We live through the war. Why U.S. is not allowing immigrants to join the industry? I cannot uh, fill out the procedures to get my res my my citizenship yet. I need to wait until uh, until the cannabis is legal at the federal because I'm all over the website. I mean, if I go. And, and ask for my citizenship and 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 the person that is that is in charge of my case just do a simple Carol Ortega Google and I, I will appear like this <laughs> all surrender by cannabis so I'm immoral come on I'm immoral because I saw an opportunity to change the world no 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 we need to change that we need to figure out and, and social equity in the cannabis industry. And why uh, a, a Mexican green holder, a legal resident, not illegal, legal resident, cannot join the industry? This is crazy, really. I think I think that this is um, the most immoral and the less social equity that you can see in the industry. It's not allowing Latino immigrants or any other immigrant in the world to join the industry. This is major. 
Uh, so we cannot talk about social equity until this is still happening. Uh, any type of conversation about social equity is bullshit, my friends, excuse me. Until, until we fix that, really, we need to allow people that were affected the most to join the industry as an employee, for God's sake. Um, and Coca, how was the... And Coca. Well, Coca leaf, well, cannabis in Colombia was legal for research in 1986. Uh, but we didn't regulate the industry until uh, 2015 during the peace process agreement that was part of the process agreement. And Coca, of course, was the major part of the peace process agreement in 2015. Uh, 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 in 2015, we legalized coca in Colombia. We legalized coca leaves in Colombia. Just like we did in 1986 with the, with the cannabis leaf. We legalized the coca leaf for scientific research. So if you want to conduct any scientific research regarding coca leaf in Colombia, now you can. And this is huge. This is huge. This is a major change, a historical change. So now you can cultivate about uh, five coca plants, but only for resource purposes. This is the beginning of everything. And uh, but we haven't regulated uh, an industry around it. We should. We should regulate an industry around it. Um, something major that happened, and it is 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 having consequences in Colombia, is that Oregon legalized cocaine. When that happened. I think one year or two years ago, um, Colombia started to move, move, move towards towards how are we going to deal with a a a, a, a prominent or a probably legalization of coca leaves, and 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 the answer is through science. We uh, we don't need to recreate the wheel. We just need to follow what is happening with with cannabis, for example. Through science, we are going to figure out that the coca leaf is a tremendous plant. We can feed ourselves from coca leaves. We don't even need meat because it has so much calcium and protein that a lot of our indigenous groups is, is the major um, food, is a major dish for them because it's so nutritious. The problem is the way that, that cocaine is, is prepared the ingredients, if you will. I'm pretty sure that is a better way to extract the coca um, benefits um, and not using, using, not using coal, not using gasoline, using all these awful things that I want to put in my body. I want the coca leaf uh, definitely um, benefits and, and, and properties. Uh, but not not gasoline. I don't want to put gasoline in my body. I don't want to put uh, coal in my body. I don't want to put um, so many acids. It's ridiculous. It's awful. I I invite you to to take a look and yeah, YouTube. I think there's there's a video of how um, labs create cocaine, and then I'm pretty sure you're going to think twice about putting that in your body. Uh, and probably you you want. You, you want to to experience the same sensation in a more organic way, and I think that's the future of Colombia. If we figure out how to extract the same components, just like cannabinoids, in a different way, that that using as a solvent a gasoline or coal and killing people, I, I I think that's the future, and 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 we deserve it. I mean. Um, I love to take uh, coca tea, and there's so there, there is a whole industry really, really around coca. Wow. wow! Thank you so much for that. I'm sure there are hundreds of students that are really ready to go to Colombia and join the research teams. Oh, yeah researching coca it's going to be a, a wild experience so again thank you so much carol gracias por todo thank you for everything you've done for all of us and we look forward to connecting a lot more with you and ssdp and figuring out how we can you know unite together to change the world so thank you definitely definitely thank you jason thank you rachel Luis, all the team and S S S D S S D P for all the great job, especially the students that believe in this cause, that especially the students that every day support your efforts 
um, volunteering, donating in any way, just being here joining us and, and learning about how to really change the world and our planet for the better. Thank you for bringing peace to my country. Really, there's nothing bigger than that. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And to all the assisted peers watching at home, we're going to take a quick 15 minute break and then we're going to come back with our first session, drug use, culture and religion. So definitely stick around for that. Moran Fulu, one of our African chapter leaders, uh, will be leading that panel. So thank you all so much and we'll see you in about 15 minutes.